With loads of business advice flooding the industry, it has never been harder to see the path to success. And you can't take action if you don't have clarity. Get clear on the actionable tips and strategies that will help to scale your business here on Masters in Clarity, the podcast that brings you clarity around messaging, business growth, digital marketing, personal development, and the business owner's journey to success. Let's join our guide, the master of turning clarity into action and lasting impact, Dolores Hirschman. Well, Barry, we were just catching up and we realized, well, let's hit record because, <laughs> you know, the best part of our conversation, we want to share it with the world. So let's just take back one step here a little bit. Tell me about how you arrived to this role that you play with the Sage Productions. And you are, you have been, I've been watching you for many years, <laughs> actually many years, and I've been seeing you evolve as this leader in the industry. This is like you are leading the conversation around events, launch type events, enrollment events. And so what are you seeing in the market as we hit 2022? And is it hybrid? Is it live? Is it virtual? Where are we going? Well, thank you, Dolores. It's a great question. And one of my favorite questions right now, it's definitely the question of the moment. You know, I think what's interesting, I've been in live events since 1991. I'll let you do the math on that. It's been a long time <laughs> since I graduated from college. I started Sage in 2004, and it was an in-person event company for the first, you know, 15 years of Sage's existence. And it started as my bread and butter was nonprofit trade associations. My first year, that's what I did. Then someone introduced me to Glazer Kennedy. I started planning events for Glazier Kennedy Insider Circle, which opened me up to the whole world of information marketing. And, you know, fast forward to today, now we have clients like Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi and Jeff Walker and Mary Morrissey. We have a pretty amazing client list. Pete Vargas, we get to work with the best of the best, which I love. And part of that is because our heartbeat, the heartbeat of our company isn't just producing events, it's producing enrollment events, events that are designed for speakers, authors, influencers, course creators, to take a launch or a challenge or a product and get more leverage from it by adding a live event and moving people in. So what's really interesting about working with those people and focusing on enrollment events is in the first 15 years of our business, we generated about $700 million for our clients in high ticket coaching offers. In the last two years, just under two years, starting with March 2020, because of COVID, um, we switched to virtual events. And with virtual live events, we've generated 400 million in wow. 18 months. So in the in the lifestyle of our business, over a billion dollars in revenue for our clients. But when you look at the fact that 700 million was generated in 15 years and 400 million was generated in less than two years, you can really see the power of virtual events. So I think what everybody is debating as we're maybe emerging out of COVID, maybe not, it's the new normal, we're all trying to figure it out, is now we've like unleashed the potential of online virtual and what actually could be possible. But we all love in-person events. Like if you think about it, I could listen to my favorite band on my phone. I can go into my media room and you know watch an incredible concert of my favorite band. I still wanna go to the concert, right? I can watch the best movie on my big screen TV. I still like to go to the movie theater. So I think just when you, we think about experiences, you have to think about the fact that in-person live events are an experience and virtual live events are an experience. And so we're trying to figure out what those experiences look like and the, the best way to harness the power of them. So I think what everybody's kind of debating right now, what we're seeing is this sort of have our cake and eat it too mentality, which is why not hybrid? Like if in-person works and virtual works, why not put them both together? Like peanut butter and jelly, what could be better, right? But there are some challenges with that. And I think this year is going to be sorting out what those challenges are and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And I want to take this conversation to a very specific angle, because I think you're going to relate and and I think we, we can we can actually add a lot of value for our listeners, you know. People in the info, info kind of industry or programs or coaching, they feel like if you're a new coach, let's say that you are in business for the last three, four years, you're in the mid or, or low six figures, right? You're not in the seven figures, yeah. but you see all these big gurus with the big events and you feel like that's exactly what I need to do. And I don't think that's true. And I think there is 
there is not one size fits all. And I want you to speak into what is the structure? If I were to say, okay, a business between zero and $200,000 gross revenue a year and a business between the 300 to a million and then a business in the 5 million, where would you advise if I were one of those businesses, where would you tell me to start? Do I go and rent the big hotel and the big production, put a million dollars into, into like, hope they come, hope I convert, but I've never done it before. Talk, let's talk into that because it's a, there's a big myth about the shoots of what an entrepreneur needs to do. And I've, we, you and I have seen a lot of people get in deep trouble. Yeah. They take exactly. loans and. So here is my favorite part about what COVID unleashed for us. If there, there's always like a bright, shiny lining to every dark cloud, right? And so this is the silver lining to the dark cloud of COVID is that with the power of virtual being unleashed, what I most love about it is if you have a small list, you know, like you don't need to have a big event. You might yeah. aspire to be Tony Robbins or whatever guru you follow, right? You might wish to have a stadium size in-person event, or you might just be hoping to make a buck from live events. What, what virtual has done is you don't need a big list. You don't need a big studio. You don't need a big production. You don't need a big budget. And most importantly, you don't need a hotel. And the biggest liability with putting on an in-person event is signing your name on the dotted line for a venue where you have a food and beverage minimum, where you have a room block, where you might have rental, where you have real liability if it doesn't actualize the way you expected. So there's a lot of crystal balling in in-person. I mean, the first, you know, 15 years of our business was all in person. We spent a lot of time crunching numbers, reverse engineering math to make sure that we got that right balance on liability with the hotel where we wouldn't be paying room attrition or writing big checks for food and beverage attrition if we didn't realize our numbers. And by the way, the secondary thing you're paying for is all that print and product, like real tangible and items. And video production, like yes, cameras AV. and directors. Yeah, right? So like if you think of an AV production- it's a wedding. If you have 10 people in the room or 150 people in the room, if you planned on 150, you're paying for AV for 150, you could have probably spent a tenth of that if you knew you were only having 10 or 50, right? Same thing with print. Once you've printed it, you own it, right? So then you, if you don't need it all, you've just wasted that money. Yeah. So what's amazing with virtual, you can do it from your home. You can do it with Zoom. You need, in my opinion, a computer, a TV, and Zoom, like that is it, right? Like a TV so you can see people in front of you bigger, a computer to actually run the production, a good mic, some good lighting. You know, you don't I mean, even need uh, lipstick these days because Zoom will give it to you. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing, right? So you can do this all from your home. So if you're just getting started, if you've been dreaming about being on stages and you've been waiting on the sidelines for someone to invite you onto their stage, you can literally create your own stage right now. No contract, no venue. You can guess about how many people are going to come. If you guess wrong, all you've done is wasted some lighting and your computer, right? And your TV setup. So, you know, we have students right now that are doing this in like a corner of their home. And think about it. If you had 50 people come to your event and let's say a very conservative average, five, 10%, let's say five of them bought your high ticket offer. Let's say it was only $5,000. That's not a bad payday, right? And it's if 10 of them bought, right, you can start to do the math. If the author offer was 10000 you just made $50,000 from a corner of your home and you've launched your coaching program. Yeah. So yeah. what I've been thinking of COVID as and virtual as is the democratization yes. of live events, meaning that anybody can do it right now. And you don't have to have a big budget. You don't have to have a big studio. You don't have to have a big list to get started and to harness the power of what we think of as a purpose-driven payday, meaning you can have income and impact, purpose and payday, and you don't have to take on the liability to do it. And here's what's also cool, just in a nutshell, global reach. Like yes. you from your living room might have people from Africa joining you. You might have people from Switzerland joining you. Whoever you're following is, you now have a truly global audience. That's not true if you're just getting started out and doing it in person. And so I love, I'm going to recap here a little bit because I, I totally agree that democratization, not just for us, the producers or the, the entrepreneurs, but democratization of information for the world. Because one of the things that I know is that many of these virtual events can be well attended. Not everybody will buy. Mm -hmm. And that is okay because if you're having a high value, when I say value is that you're really adding value to people's lives in your low ticket or free virtual event, you are 
building a brand that while not everybody will buy, as long as you serve powerfully from the moment you get on stage or on that Zoom, you're going to have a ripple effect that is a long-term payday. Yeah. And it's it's warming up your audience. We often say your live event is designed to get people to rave about you, renew, come back year after year, and recruit other people to come with them. You're never going to sell the whole room. That's true of in-person and of virtual. There's yeah. only going to be a percentage. But if you deliver an amazing experience, you're also cultivating a crowd who's going to rave, renew, and recruit. And then if you can get them into your high-ticket coaching offer where you also get them to rave, renew, and recruit, that's literally how year over year, event over event, you generate a really big business. I mean, a yeah. purpose-driven payday. And most importantly, doing your zone of genius, which you're meant to do, helping others do the same. So you're having the, I think of live events as this massive like ripple effect in a global pond, right? Like you're the stone that creates the ripple effect in that global pond because when you do your best work, you help others do theirs and it goes on yeah. and on. There's no better, faster way than a live event to do that. And I love that. And so there's three parts here, you know, the audience and bringing people into the room or Zoom room, the way the container let's yeah. say Zoom with Zoom lipstick or a fancy room with a lot of investment. Either way, that's a container. Yeah. So there's, those are two parts that kind of you guys, Sage Production doesn't necessarily control. You just based on what the client needs, you will facilitate. And I know you have some big clients, but I also know that you have a whole community of students in all range of size and companies. Yes. And what you bring to the table is a for, maybe we call it a formula, a, formula. a methodology. It's a formula yeah. Yeah. that you've perfected since 1991 and that, and that you reverse engineer from the moment that audience member, that person walks into the room, what are they feeling, what they're experiencing, and how do we get them to say yes, to go deeper with that speaker? So, so let's talk about that formula and, 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 and let's start talking about how can people, who, who are these people that you bet that would benefit from this formula and, and how would they work with you? Yeah, that's a great question. So there, what's interesting about this, kind of tying back to your last question and this and pulling them both together, is that whether you're a big name in the space or whether you're one of our students that you've never heard of, the formula that we're using for live events, and again, in person or virtual, the formula is the same. That's what's also great. If you learn the formula, you can pivot back and forth between in person and virtual because the formula is the same. We call it the three by three PAG. And what I mean by that is we really recommend a three-day event, and there are three things you're trying to do each day. So when I look at the first day of a three-day event, I'm not selling anything. It's all just about three Cs, content, connection, and community. You want to have amazing content, so they're having aha after aha after aha. You want to have amazing connection of them to you as the host, also of them to each other, this like-minded community, which is the third C community, but most importantly, connection to themselves, a higher sense of what's possible for themselves. And this is really important for an enrollment event. Because here's the thing, if you're planning to sell them something, if they don't believe they can do it, they're not going to pay you to help them do it. And so often when we're in a sales environment, we're like, how do we get them to buy the thing? It's like, well, the first step is to get them to believe it's possible, to believe in mm -hmm. themselves. And if they do that, they start to future cast what they want their life or their business or their health or their wealth or their love or their light, whatever it is that you're doing, personal development, business development, all the same, future cast what they want it to be and analyze where they are stuck. And the more we see it, we can't unsee it. It becomes about closing that gap. How do I get where I wanna go faster, simpler, and easier? Which leads to day two. If day one was about content connection and community, day two is about pain, solution, invitation. Exposing that gap creates a certain pain, right? Like once we see where we could be, we just want to get there faster, simpler, easier. So that creates a very real pain on wanting to get there. The solution, that they're looking for is you. And it comes in the form of your invitation or what the industry often thinks of as the offer or the pitch. And that invitation in a sales as service formula like this one is you're looking for a way to close the gap. I have the way to do that. I'm gonna give you everything that I possibly can in this three days. But if you'd like more, join me for a year. That's where your high ticket offer comes in. If we do this right, 
And the structure really leads them to what I think of as an inescapable conclusion. We often in our industry talk about the that term, <laughs> right? The irresistible offer is offer. making sure your offer is yummy. But the inescapable conclusion is that by day two, they've reached that tipping point of I have so many great ideas, I can't wait to get started to wow, I have so many ideas, I'm nervous about getting started. I need what a solution and you've got it in the form of your invitation. So it's a very sales as service approach that our clients love because you're not having to manipulate them into a sale. You're not having to strong arm them into a sale. They're literally asking you by day two, what's the next step? If you think about it, when we love an experience, what do we say? This is amazing. I want more. And you're like, great. Well, more lives right over here. Continue the journey, which leads to day three. And the last part of a three-day event is decision, commitment, celebration. Decide to do something differently. Don't let this be three days wasted. Commit to a timeline, ideally today. Don't let a day become a decade. And celebrate what it's going to look like on the other side. Now, if you decide, commit, celebrate, and as you're plotting that out, you realize you need help, the invitation's still open. Come join us and let us help you get there. Decide to join us. Commit today to being in our program and we'll celebrate today at this event. We start the program at the event. So that simple three by three PAG, if you were to look at the biggest names in the industry, like open up the hood, look at the engine of their event, they are really designed around that formula that I just explained. It really can be that simple. And let me ask, so I'm going to give you a testimonial or a witness story. And then I'm going to ask you a very specific question that probably you haven't been asked before. So I don't, I'm, I, I know you were in the, in the backstage. I, we didn't meet at this event, but my first event of that time was in 2014. Yes. And I sat through that, my eyes getting wider and wider, because if someone has not experienced a three day event in this, in this kind of experience it is it it, it it is like nothing you've done before it really is and i had done a lot of things by that day so it was like <laughs> it was one of those things that took me totally by surprise and by day two when the invitation came in i was sitting there with just minted coach i was i just had graduated been awarded the certification from ICF, launching my coaching business and, and, you know, struggling to get started. And the offer came in and it was $10,000 up front or a thousand dollars a month. I didn't have $10,000. And I, and I was very proud. I want, I mean, I'm, 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 I could have asked, you know, my family or my, my, my partner, but I wanted to do this on my own. And so I'm sitting there, the invitation comes in. There's a lot of emotion that I'm feeling a lot. I'm going to ask you about that in a minute. And I looked at my bank account and I said, if I have a thousand dollars in my business account, I will enroll. I couldn't do the, the savings <laughs> package, but I could do on the monthly. And I had a thousand dollars and 10 literally in my bank account and I enrolled. And what that did to me, independent of the course that I enrolled in or the, the, the whoever was the coach on the stage, what it did to me, and you're so spot on, is that in the day one, I started seeing a future for me that I had never imagined for myself and started believing that I could step into that future. And on day two, um, and, and, and I know this is a great formula because I've now, since that day, been in many events, have felt probably not as deep as that day, but the same feeling in multiple hosts, but the, the, the mega host of all these were you, was you and, and Blue, like Sage Productive was, a, like, was a, like, the host for all of this ultimately. And so my question to you, and by the way, it was, it was a great story. I enrolled and it changed my life. And here you and I are talking and I've done fun things and helped a lot of people, made a lot of money. Now, the question for you is, how do you, what, what preparation do you give the host? Because we're talking about people hosting these events, right? Maybe for the first time. There is an emotional, and for some people in the audience, a deep emotional experience that they're going to go through. How do you prepare your hosts, which are your students, to navigate, manage, uh, journey with the audience through that feeling of possibility on day one and sometimes deep, deep pain on day two and the fear which I felt and the courage, fear with the courage to take action because it, it's not... It's not like 
small money here or, or for, for many people in the audience, they've never invested in themselves. In the, they could be millionaires, but if they've never invested in themselves, there's a whole coaching experience. And I'm asking this as a coach, because how do you prepare your hosts in, in leading that emotional experience from the stage? Yeah, it's such a great question, Dolores. I mean, I think that experience you went through is so um, true of all of our audiences. And listen, we've tested this in different markets, different niches, different languages. So, you know, it's what's fascinating is buyers are buyers. Like a buyer in Brazil doesn't look different from a buyer in France, doesn't look like a different from a buyer in Japan or a buyer in the U.S., that's awesome about this because the psychology of a buyer is I'm either going to be an emotional buyer or a logical buyer. So when I'm going through this amazing educational experience, and keep in mind, the model is not bait and switch. The model is not I'm giving you just enough to be dangerous. It's like I'm giving you the model. I'm giving you the method. The reason for buying is you want accountability. You want community. You want handholding. You want to cut a check for speed, right? Sometimes you want all of those things. I need help getting there, and I want to get there faster, right? So that's the theory behind it. And it's important to know that. Like some people are just going to take what they got at the event and go do. It's like, great. And hopefully you'll come back next year and bring more people with you. And other people are going to say, this is amazing, but I could really use help. But the psychology of it, an emotional buyer is going to hear the offer and be like, that's for me. I'm in. I'm going to do it. Whether they have the money, they don't have the money. The emotion is just, I've got to do this. The logical buyer is more like you and me. I'm a logical buyer. I'm married to an emotional buyer, so we have both in our household. But the logical buyer is going to basically take their time to crunch their numbers, ask questions, figure out how they can make it possible, plumb through the depths of all the fears and the objections. It's why I love a three-day event because it, you know, there's a saying, if I had more time, I'd write you a shorter letter. Yes. And I think it is tempting when you're getting started to think, I'm not ready for a three-day, I'll do a one-day but a one day is harder than a three day. You have to really nail your points, right? If I had more time, I'd write you a shorter letter. It's harder to do a TED talk than it is to do a one yes. hour talk. <laughs> it's harder to do a one day than it is to do a three day. So what I love about a three day is it allows you the time to just love up your attendees on the first day, take them on the journey to what more from you on the second day. And for those logical buyers, give them the time to ask the questions, work through the objections, talk it out with you, talk it out with their team, talk it out with their spouse, talk it out with their bank, talk it out with whoever they need to talk it out with until they get to the right decision for them. And I think that's super important from a sales and service perspective is to allow the time for you to go through those objections and allow the time for them to go through those objections. You don't want to penalize a logical buyer, especially when you're making a high ticket offer, a $10,000 investment, 15, 25, $35,000 investment, you should take a minute to contemplate if that's right for you. You should take a minute to ask all the questions. And you as the host, if you really want to serve your audience, you want that time to answer those questions and to make sure it's right for them. Because a really key concept in our industry, if you're in this for the long haul, is today's non-buyer is tomorrow's buyer. So if you take good care of all of your people, you'll be amazed how year after year, someone who said no on year one will say yes on year two based on how you treated them in year one. It's really important. I, I love, and you may or may not be conscious of some of the words you use, but I'm going to pick two. If you're in this for the long haul, that's key. This is not a let's get rich strategy. It right. is not. That's one thing. And the other thing you used multiple times was love up or the word love. And I think those are key ingredients that if you're listening to Barry right now, this is not quick sales scheme. This is a, how can I love the people I serve so much that I invest time in serving them powerfully for three days and that year after year, long haul consistency, this will lead into the dream of a growing business with a growing impact that I have. And, and, and I want, why do I reiterate what you said? It's because people are forgetting that. COVID has launched everybody into becoming an entrepreneur. And they see people, you know, they see that the one day wonder people say, oh, Tony Robbins can do it. I do do it. Tony Robbins has been doing it since 19, I don't know how old he is, but 80 at least. Yes. Like that's a freaking long time of building trust in a market. So, so if you're listening to this, just commit to serve powerfully and be 
in this for the long haul. Otherwise, it's not right for you. Interestingly enough, doing this with some pretty iconic leaders over the last 17 years, I can tell you there's certain names in our space that at certain times, everyone was like, that's the one to watch. They're unstoppable. And they're nowhere around today. Like no one even Mm -hmm. knows their name. And then you have other people who... Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi, Jeff Walker, Mary Morrissey, they've been around for a long time. And if you were to look at the, what is the consistency is they serve hard and it allows them to sell easy. That concept of service and having worked with them behind the scenes, I promise you the decisions they're making are through the lens of how do we serve our audience? Yeah. Of course they want to make money. They're, they're company. They have to, up, right? Because it's sustainability one-on-one. Yes, exactly. We were, no that's why I think it was money. a purpose-driven payday. Like they want the payday, but not at the sacrifice of purpose. They want yes. the income, but not the sacrifice of impact. And the ones who are the one hit wonders, the flash in the pans are the ones who are so focused on the money and not focused on the service. And you can only ride that so long, you know, it's a one trick pony, right? It doesn't last very long. So when you're focused on service and leading with your heart, your audience, that authenticity, that transparency, and we sometimes walk away from a sale, you know, good leaders will say, I love you. I think you're not ready for this right now. You know, I I, I don't think this is the right time for you, right? And if you decide it is, that's up to you, right? But I mean, that's the difference between a sale at any cost and serving your audience and saying, I want to make sure you make the right decision today because I'd like for you to be with me tomorrow. Well, spoken from the lady who has been at this for 31 years. Uh, <laughs> so you are in this for the long haul. And, and, I, and I love, you know, when, and I think I love that, that, that point you just made about don't sell if the audience is not ready or if you're closing a sale, there's just an authority that you build. And I, it happened to me yesterday when someone actually purchased a product and we went into onboarding and I said, I, I, guys, stop the ball. This is not right. And I, let's take three months to see if the client can get ready for this service that, that they want to buy. And it was funny to watch because the, the client was like, but, but, but I want it right now, but I'm not, you're not ready. So Let's, let's, I'm not going to say no. I'm I'm, like when people are begging you to sell something and you're saying no, that's an actual magical place of authority and loyalty because that person would actually, you now just kind of raise the bar for that person. They're going to go do their homework so that they can be ready to work with you. And that's a whole other conversation that very few people speak of. In this well, it's interesting in virtual Dolores, it's very transparent what's happening behind the scenes because they're all talking, they're talking in chat because again, we use zoom zooms, a platform for a $400 million, you know, revenue stream for our clients. All of it was done on the back of Zoom. That's There's you know, 350 million users on Zoom every single day, like on at any moment in time, like right now, there's 350 million people on Zoom. Everybody knows how to use it. So you don't have to make it harder than it is, but know that they're watching each other, they're chatting. So if you're behaving one way over here and somewhere a different way over here, like your onstage persona and your backstage persona don't match, that's going to come out when someone says in the chat, yeah, don't go talk to a team member. They're just going to try and sell you. It's a super aggressive environment. If you do it right, they're like, oh, I see you have a question. You should really go talk to the team. They're amazing. I just chatted with them and they helped get me to the right decision. You know, and sometimes the right decisions, no, to your point. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, that transparency and authenticity is really more evident right now in virtual events than it's ever been. And just really quick, I mean, I think what really worries hosts sometimes is how do I fill the room? How do I make an offer? And how do I overcome objections? So the overcoming objections piece, there's five universal objections. You know, we said buyers are buyers and buyer psychology is buyer psychology. It doesn't matter what market or niche. It always comes down to time money, spouse, fear, shame, and self-doubt. So if you know that going in, you can support your buyer through plumbing the depths of, do they or don't they have the time? Do they or don't they have the money? Is their spouse really a stumbling block or are they the stumbling block? You know, Can they get over the fear, the shame, the self-doubt? So we spend a lot of time with our hosts and our students coaching them through how to do that from the stage and how to do that behind the scenes. Because if you understand that those are the layers they're going through to make a buying decision, you can better support them in making that decision. I love that. I love that. Well, Barry, where can people find you, maybe become a student of yours or hire you to run their show? Well, thanks for asking. Um, we, we do an event 
twice a year called the virtual event on virtual events. And in that three day, of course, it's a three day, we walk you through exactly what the formula is in more detail than we've gone through today. Um, We have one coming up. It's the first week of March and it's uh, tve.live. If you're interested, you can go check that out. Um, So yeah, it's it's fast and furious. It's about to to come. Um, We also are on podcasts around you. We're starting to do more in social media. Right now, we have a little bit on Instagram, not as much as we should. We're busy running our operation. (laughs) So, you know, the best way to find us is that. And then, of course, we have a coaching program called LEAP, the Live Event Accelerator Program. And so if you're considering a more long-term investment, um, you can always seek that out. Um, We're getting amazing results with our students in LEAP. And they're, again, the names of people that you've never heard of who are out there making money every single day from their living room using the power of a live event, a virtual live event. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Barry, for taking time to chat with us. And this has been an amazing, value-packed, whatever, 30 minutes. And I'm very (laughs) grateful. (laughs) Thank you. I'm grateful to you. I always love spending time with you. (laughs) Thank you for listening to this episode of Masters in Clarity. If you love today's show, please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. Share this episode with two people in your world And as a gift, go to mastersinclarity.com slash free to download free clarity resources. Join your host, Dolores Hirschman, next time to continue forging a clear path to your impactful success.